Right, before we start to do the problem, we have to talk a little bit about friction. Now, friction occurs when one, sur when one surface flows over another surface and when it's in contact with it. The fr friction will always act in the direction opposite to any movement or tendency to move. So, in any situation, there will be a maximum po possible frictional force. If the applied force is greater than the maximum, then some movement will take place. Friction increases to match the implied force up to a maximum. This is called limiting friction. Then, at this time, the uh, system is in equilibrium, i.e. is no movement. Limiting frictional force will depend not only on the type of the surfaces and the normal reaction between them. And then there's this thing called the coefficient of friction. Now, in reality, the frictional force when an object is moving, the dynamic friction, is usually slightly less than the maximum friction when it's stationary. This is called static friction, but for the sake of this uh, level of mechanics, these are considered to be the same. So, the, a, box of, a block of mass 6 kg rests on a horizontal surface. The coefficient of friction of the block and the surface is 0.25. A force of P, which is 30 degrees to the horizontal, is applied to the block so that it's just on the point of moving. Find the value of P. So here we've got the I and J vectors. Okay, so I will be this way, J will be this way. So a few things to write down about friction first. The limiting friction, which we just talked about, or the limiting frictional force is dependent on the normal reaction and the type of surface. Mu is called the coefficient of friction. There's a clue in the question that says um, Okay, let's just carry on. The frictional force is always less than or equal to the limiting friction, i.e. S is less than or equal to mu R. When the body is moving or just at the point of moving, then F will be equal to mu R, and this is what you need to know. So, resolving I in the I direction, I in this direction, so we've got P cos 30 here, minus F, the frictional force, and that is equal to zero because the thing's in limiting equilibrium. Resolving the other way, we've got in the J direction, we've got R acting upwards, plus P, col uh, P sine 30 from here, P sine 30, and then minus the 6G is equal to zero. And then as the friction is limiting, we can say that the block is at the point of moving, F is equal to 0 0.25 times R. So these are the three equations we've got to play with. So I'll write them down again. So from 1 and 3, so from 1 and 3, so what we're going to do, we're going to substitute 3 into 1. We can say that P cos 30 is 0 0.25R is equal to 0, and therefore P cos 30 is equal to 0 0.25R, and therefore P will be equal to 4, because this is 1 over 4R. So 4, taking it to the side, becomes 4P cos 30 will be equal to R. If we substitute that now into 2, so instead of r, we now put 4p cos 30 plus p sine 30, and then take the 6g to the other side, we get equal to 6g. Common factor of p here, we'll take that out, and then we'll divide 6, 6g by this, so we get p will be equal to 6g divided by 4 cos 30 plus sine 60. Take our calculator out using g equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, we're going to get 13.579, so it's going to be 13.6 newtons.